Yes, indeed. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Lesson 4. Shout out to NGO Radio Terra for having me. These are, uh, this is second semester of a 12-week program. Um, these, are all, these are lessons for all ages, all levels. And my name is Ecussionist, and I'm so excited to bring you these bits of knowledge every week. Um, if you have any questions, fill them up in the chat. You can also email me at ecussionist at gmail.com. That's E-C-U-S-S-I-O-N-I-S-T at gmail.com. Um, I'm on the road right now, so I'm tapping in with you guys from yet another studio. But that's all right, because I won't forget about you, and I'm committed to these lessons every week. So let's get right into it. Um, this week, I want to talk about how to practice. I want to talk about some methods that I use. Um, I want to talk about the importance of counting. Um, we're going to do some call and answer. And um, <clears throat> we might even revisit some of the claves that we talked about last week. But let's get into how to practice. Um, I think that there's a, a tendency that when we start learning things, we get excited and we want to play them at the tempo that they're really at. But in actuality, we should probably be slowing things down and then working them up to tempo. So I want to play an example of a beat that I learned that I discussed a lot in uh, semester one. And I use it as an example for learning how to practice because it's, it's a rather complicated groove and I want to show you how I was able to learn this groove myself. So um, this is 777-9311 by Morris Day and the Time and Prince. So the groove is So that's the groove, right? There's a lot going on. I think the actual tempo is So that's significantly faster. Moore's Day and the Time played it like that live, but the studio version is like. Um, it's interesting because I'm on the electronic kit, so doing some of the left foot work with the hi hat is a little interesting. So. It's, it's hard to get that super clean on the electronic kit because it doesn't respond the way uh, an acoustic hi-hat stand does. Um, but we're going to do our best. we got to do with what we have, where we are, when we have it. And that's what we talked about last week as well. If you're a professional, don't hesitate to get right onto your goals today. Even if you don't have the equipment or quite even the entire knowledge yet, just try it. Just start and you'll learn as you go and then you'll look back two weeks and see that you've learned a new skill, or see that you've gotten better, or see that you've actually started to manifest your dreams. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna slow this groove down. So I'm gonna play it really slow, and then I'm gonna break it apart and show you how I arrived at linking all the parts together. And let's put on the click. So actually, that's, that's really nice, super 
slow like that. I like playing it that slow, but that's what the beat sounds like super slow, right? So from to right? So the hi-hat part and the kick part. In fact, that's how the intro of the song starts. So I know that I have to get that. And if you're having a trouble, if you're having trouble with that, you just go right? And then add another beat. So and then right? And then if you're having a problem with the, just play that a couple times. Right? And then try and do that for four bars. So. Right? Okay, cool. So that's the basic quarter note pattern, the 16th note pattern, 16th note based pattern on the kick. Now I'm going to add the snare part. So. Right? So that's, uh, this is still not the full beat, right? But we're building the foundations. We're building the building blocks of what this groove is. And of course, a groove is nothing without a kick pattern, a snare pattern, and a hi-hat pattern. So obviously, we're going to start adding in the doubles, the, and the opening, of, the openings in the hi-hat, right? And, um, but for now, we're just doing the, Right? So let's start let's start adding in just the hi-hat openings and then we'll throw in the diddles. And again, if you're having a hard time with even that chunk, do that a couple times and just isolate that first part of the rhythm and then duplicate that or loop that. So three. Right? And then add in the next part of the phrase. Again. Okay? I added the, 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 the next snare part. I'm going to continue on. Now attach it to the top again and then make the loop. All right, now openings in the hi hat. So
Okay, so how I would practice and learn adding in those open hi-hats is to break it apart. So. And then. So. Okay, so I think it's, I, I just realized that it's a lot easier to determine where the openings are when you add in the diddles. So that's another thing that you discover when you're practicing, that sometimes the order of operations that you're taking it in is not the right one. So I do need to add in the diddle. So let's just do a part of the diddle infused phrase. Again. Okay, right? So what we have here is we have 32nd notes occurring over 16th notes, and that has to be clean, so. Right? It's getting cleaner. So. Right? So let's put the click on. Here we go. So. Right? So right now I'm just going through different parts, I'm playing it super slow, and I'm showing you that I'm just doing sort of um, an inventory of all the parts about this groove that I know, and I'm intersplicing uh, some different beats in here because I'm playing it slow, right? That's a tendency that I, that I have um, when I'm playing it super slow because I'm actually not playing the beat as entirely accurate as when I play it at tempo, right? So. That's why we slow it down so that we can start to see some of our weaknesses when it's slow. But we can't see those weaknesses when it's super fast, right? Just cleaning up different things that I see that need to be cleaned up.
And then it all comes together. Once you start to feel comfortable with each little individual part of this rhythm, phrase one, phrase two, phrase one, phrase two, then all of a sudden, phrase one, phrase two, phrase one, phrase two just becomes the entire phrase, just one phrase. All right, so let's take this up tempo a little bit. Not quite at tempo yet, but let's just speed it up a little bit. Right? That's not the whole phrase yet. That's like that's like two thirds of the phrase. So, but I'm just showing you that I'm not. I'm 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 pretending like I'm relearning this groove to just show you the best way to do it, which is to break it apart into individual phrases. Do that really really slow, then speed up the tempo just a little bit and do the same thing. Let's, let's speed up the tempo. Like this is almost at tempo, but it's still slightly under, so. Right, it's still.
Okay, right? So one more tempo. We'll speed it up. And this time we'll, we'll push it to like the... your phone number all right cool so let's try this tempo One more element to this is that when when on the chorus of 777 9311 the the drums do a little something different on the chorus. On the chorus they actually have a clap sound that's on 2 and 4. Now when I watched videos of Morris Day in the time, they actually had Jelly Bean the drummer just playing the off snare pattern. And they had another member of the time just playing two and four. So one, pretend that's a clap. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? That's what happens on the hook is that this two and four comes in. But on the verses, it's... Right? Right? So there's this offbeat snare that happens one time in this whole entire groove, and that juxtaposes with the thing that's happening on two and four. So. And I'm gonna play that clap part on the ride pattern, on the ride symbol here, just to show you, um, like if I were playing this. And I was, if, if I was supposed to play the clap on two and four as well as maintaining that whole groove, I would use my right hand and put a clap sound either in this section of the drum set or right here or right here. This is a little far. I wonder if I can reach that. Um, let, me, let me try actually. Wow, that's really low. Hmm. All right, I'm just gonna use the ride symbol for now. So, we're in the verse right now. Chorus. Two, ready, go. All right, so clearly, I don't have it all together when it comes to adding that and then putting a crash on one. So I've discovered, right? So I'm going to take the tempo way back down. Let's get this right. Okay, that's, that's not way back down, but that's definitely down from where we were. So, Ah. 
right? So in this particular case, I don't necessarily need to loop the moment that one comes around every two beats because I, I really, I feel like I got the whole phrase as long as I repeat the whole phrase a bunch of times while nailing that one, which I did, I can bring it back up to tempo and try this again. So going back uptown. That's that that's what you really want to get. Thing, though that I do notice is that the, when one comes around normally we put a kick on it right or a but because the phrase is that the kick is on the E of one not one it's one E so this is a really interesting beat there's a lot of subtle things here there's openings in the in the foot of the hi-hat there's 30 second notes on the top there's a lot of layers happening at the same time, 32nd notes and 16th happen, 16ths happening. So got it. you got to really like break this thing down just like I did it today. So again, start slow, break it down, and then speed it up once you get comfortable with the groove. So slow. Right? The... And uh, all right. So, I got this groove going, I'm feeling super good about it. I feel like I have learned it over the course of the last half hour again. Um, and, um, you know, I feel like even though you know that I already knew this groove, I feel like I relearned it. I feel like I controlled the beats a little bit more. I think that when I slowed it down, I was able to hear some of my own mistakes. And then when I sped it back up, I realized that I got cleaner. All right, so I'm gonna take us home today by doing a little trading fours with you, a call and answer situation. Um, call and answer is one of the biggest aspects of music. It's one of the things that's found in um, the success of great improvisers. It's one of the foundational cornerstones of African music and the idea of using music to communicate. I call, you answer, all right? So I'm gonna play four bars and then leave four bars of space for you. Again, my name is e Cushionist. This has been lesson number four. We talked about the groove of 777-9311, how to break it down, how to make it slow, loop different aspects of the phrase. Once you get that, you connect all the phrases together and then slowly speed that up and then slow it down again once you see that you've 
found another mistake and then speed that up again. Um, we didn't talk so much about counting today, but I think it was really important to show you guys my process in learning new things, learning new grooves, learning songs. All right. So four, two, three, four.